by the end of this video we're going to add a speed boost item to this game so when you pick it up you'll have a cool trailing effect and you'll be faster a particle effect will flip and change with our character as well as look really cool cool let's check it out so first off in the hierarchy let's right click and go 2d object sprites square and i'm going to call this speed item in the sprite render i'm going to go and select this explanation mark icon from the kenny games one bit tile map i'm going to make the scale 0.5 by 0.5. I'm going to change the color to be a purple that stands out more. Then I'm going to click add component and add a box collider 2D and click is trigger. Next I'll click add component and go new script and we'll add a new script called speed item. If we double click on this to open it up then we can delete our start and update and at the very top next to mono behavior I'm going to go comma i item. We added this i item interface before which basically just made it so we added a collect function. So I'm going to delete the middle here and at the top I'm going to go public float multiplier. This is going to be our speed multiplier. In fact, I could call it speed multiplier to make that clearer. And I'm going to set this to a default of 1.5 F. So when we collect this item, whatever script handles our player movement, we're going to want to let it know that we've picked up a speed boost. To do this, at the top, we're going to run a write a public static event action with a capital A. And inside triangle brackets, we'll pass in a float, which is going to be our speed multiplier. And I'm going to call this on speed collected. If you hover over action, we'll be using system. And now in our collect, we can call on speed collected dot invoke. Our invoke is asking for a float. So let's pass in our speed multiplier. And because we've picked up this item, we then want to call destroy game object. Cool. And that's all we need in here. So if we go back to unity, and if we select our player, you can see we have this player movement script. You can use wherever you handle your player movement, but we'll double click and open up the script. And as you can see at the top, we've got a move speed variable. What we're also going to want underneath here is a float for our speed multiplier. We'll set this to a default of 1f. So of course that shouldn't change our movement speed because we're timesing it by one. Now let's move down and find where we use our move speed. If you highlight this and press Control F, it'll bring up the find and it'll show you a highlighted move speed for us. So this is where we do our movement. Here where we're timesing horizontal movement by our move speed, we also want to times it by our speed multiplier. And finally in our start, we're gonna need to subscribe to our speed item dots on speed collected. And we're gonna have to write a new function here for this to subscribe to and call whenever we pick up our item. I'm gonna write this just below the start so we can see it all together. And I'm gonna go void speed boost. And we're gonna want this to take in a float of our multiplier. Now, because we want this to be a temporary speed boost and go back to normal after a certain amount of time, we're going to want to use a coroutine. Let's rename this to start speed boost. And we can copy this and paste this up above to be what our item calls when it's picked up. So now start speed boost is going to need a coroutine to call. So let's go private i enumerator speed boost coroutine. This will also want a parameter of float multiplier. Also in here, nice and easy, we're gonna to wanna to set our speed multiplier to be the new multiplier passed in. We're gonna to wanna to yield, return, new, wait for seconds. Let's wait two seconds. Then after two seconds, let's set our speed multiplier back to one. Now in our start speed boost, we can go start coroutine, pass in speed boost coroutine, and in here, pass in our multiplier. Cool, and that's it. Let's go back to Unity. I'm gonna move my speed item down to the side. Now on our speed item, you can see our speed multiplier is set to a default of 1.5. So this should increase our speed by half on top of what we already have. I'm gonna set this to something really high just so you can see it like free. Press play. When we pick up our item, this is how fast we're currently running. Oh my God, enemies, quick, get the item. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, that's very fast. And then after two seconds, we go back to normal. To make this easier to visualize and make it a little bit cooler, like we did for turning and jumping, we added particle effects. So let's add a particle effect for our speed boost. On our player, if you open up, we can see we've got this smoke FX, which we're currently using for jumping and changing direction. Check out that video if you're interested. So let's make a new one for our speed boost. We're gonna right click on our player and go effects, particle system. I'm gonna rename this speed FX. The duration, we won't care about too much. I'm gonna set it to zero because we do want this to be looping this time. Our start lifetime will be 0.5 and our start speed is gonna be one. And I'm gonna make our start color half transparent around 150. The simulation space is gonna be world. And I'm gonna set max particles to be five and play on awake is gonna be false. That's it for the top bit. A mission we can leave as it is. And the shape I'm gonna to set to sprite and then the scale to be zero, zero, zero. Then I'm gonna tick on velocity over lifetime. And I'm gonna set linear X to be minus 0.1 and linear y to be minus 0.1 and we'll change the space to be world. What this will do is as we move, it'll fly off behind us. Next color over lifetime I'm gonna tick on, click on this and then at the top right tag, set the alpha to be zero. So our sprite will fade away over time. Then texture sprite sheet animation, tick this on, set the mode to be sprites 
And then here we select a sprite. So from our tile map, I'm gonna select the image of our character walking. Then finally in renderer, on order and layer, I'm just gonna set this to minus one just to make sure it goes behind our player. And in renderer as well, on your material, you're gonna to wanna to pick sprites default. And that should be it. If we turn on play on awake and press play, we can see we now have this cool effect where it looks like our player is going so fast that it's got like a stream of ghosts behind it. <laughs> Let's remember that this sprite isn't flipping. We can fix that when we add the code in to get this effect to play. So let's now go to our code. Remember to turn off play on awake and we'll go back to our player movement script. At the very top, you can see we've got a public particle system for smoke effects. If we duplicate this by pressing Control D and add in a speed FX, then we'll scroll back down to where we're doing our speed boost coroutine. On here, all we have to do is go speed effects dot play before our yield weight, and after our yield weight, we'll go speed effects dot stop. Now to get this to flip with our player, all you have to do is go to where we flip our player when we change directions. So if you see in our update, we have this function called flip. If I hold down control and click, we can see we're passing in this local scale to our transformed local scale of our player. This is making our player's sprite flip. If you duplicate this code, and then just before transform, you can type speedfx dot. So we've got speedfx dot transform dot local scale equals our new local scale. This will make our particle sprite flip with our player. So cool, if we save this, go back to Unity, and in our player movement script, don't forget to drag your speedfx object into your speedfx slot inside player movement. And I'm also gonna to go to our speed item and set this back to 1.5. So we're not going crazy fast anymore. Cool, so now when we press play and we grab our speed boost item, you can see we got our cool flipping sprites. It actually changes direction when you move and we get a nice little speed boost. You can do this with any other kind of boosting items using the same kind of idea, like a damage modifier, size modifier, anything like that. You can use a similar concept. So yeah, hopefully that gives you some ideas. If you want to grab the code for this or any of the videos I've done before, you can get it on my Patreon. I also upload any packages that help you out. Like for this video, I'll add the particle effect for this guy speeding around, as well as any scripts I've used in this episode. So yeah, check it out if you're feeling lazy or want to support the channel. Cool, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!